Good afternoon. Hello, nice to see you. <clears throat> okay, so let us summarize shortly what we have already learned about magnetic field. And uh, initially, we started from the effect of magnetic field on uh, moving electric charges. Uh, then we um, define how uh, magnetic field is created by uh, some electric current flowing through a conductor. Uh, in particular, one of the model which we considered is a long straight um, wire. Then we considered also how uh, two long straight wires are interacting, which are carrying current are interacting with each other uh, <clears throat> when they are placed in close proximity to each other. Uh, so we consider the uh, magnetism in matter, like the origin of permanent uh, magnetism or uh, induced uh, magnetism ferromagnetic materials, paramagnetic materials, and also uh, diamagnetic materials, which are actually all uh, substances. Uh, it's just very weak effect, diamagnetism, uh, which results in the reduction of external magnetic field. And if, uh, in addition to diamagnetism, some materials possess uh, ferromagnetic or um, paramagnetic uh, features, uh, then these diamagnetic features can be neglected because they are much weaker than the other. <clears throat> and uh, um, it is necessary to underline, so far we were considering only uh, constant uh, magnetic field. So it could be uh, not uniform magnetic field, distribution in the space. Uh, however, we didn't consider any changing magnetic field uh, with time. So today we are going to proceed with the uh, starting of effects related to magnetic field. But um, this will be in particular related to our time dependent magnetic field which is uh, when we have magnetic field vector uh, changing with uh, time. Mm -hmm. And um, there are specific uh, effects which are, are observed in such systems. And uh, that is the uh, topic of our study today. So let me share my screen for the beginning. Yeah, so if, for instance, we just uh, have such simple uh, uh, experimental setup, which actually you can repeat um, either even at home or in any uh, student's lab. Uh, so if you connect some wire, may loop, maybe better several, um, loops of wire, uh, some, some make some coil with uh, several loops in order to increase this uh, signal um, and place stationary next to it a permanent magnet, you will notice that this uh, measuring uh, like ampere meter, uh, like this multimeter in the mode of ampere meter, will not show anything. So definitely will be, so we have this uh, closed loop because ampere meter possess very small uh, internal resistance. Um, in that case, we can consider this as just a closed loop. You can uh, 
uh, short these uh, terminals, this positive and negative terminal with some wire, and nothing will change. It's kind of shorted by a meter itself because it's the uh, requirement for ampere meter to possess very small uh, internal resistance. So it doesn't affect on uh, electric current, which we measure in uh, different circuits. So we consider this loop as shorted, a closed uh, loop made with current, uh, with a wire, without any electromotive force. Um, so we don't have any batteries in it. So obviously we don't have any current uh, and uh, this magnetic field, it is there. So we have certain magnetic field flux uh, through this loop because uh, magnetic field vector is not equal to zero next to this loop, but uh, nothing is going on. However, once we start to move, for instance, if we move uh, closer to the loop, this uh, permanent magnet, uh, we see some current and this particular direction of current, which for this loop is in the clockwise direction, um, is uh, detected by ampere meter as a negative current. And then if we move our magnet uh, further from the uh, loop, we see some positive current flowing through it. So it's kind of very interesting effect because um, we do have current, which we can detect with the ampere meter. So it's objectively uh, experimentally measured um, quantity of electric current. However, we don't provide any uh, electromotive force uh, for this. So this without any um, electro, we don't provide any battery, but since current exists and this wire possess certain resistance, it's very small, but uh, it uh, does have some resistance. Um, we definitely need to have some electromotive force in order to drive this um, charge carriers across the, uh, or, uh, along the uh, loop and create electric current. So this electromotive uh, force is uh, kind of called induced electromotive force. And this effect um, of uh, in creating, like inducing electromotive force and um, some inducing uh, currents in closed uh, loops uh, by changing uh, magnetic field next to it is uh, called Faraday's uh, effect. So this is very important uh, effect, which um, has found uh, very broad uh, and uh, important applications in engineering and science. Uh, so we will talk about them in more details a bit later. And uh, first of all, uh, I would like to highlight the uh, and explain a bit a very simple uh, setup, experimental, experimental setup, which was used by uh, Faraday to um, investigate and show this effect. Uh, <clears throat> so here we have some iron. Uh, uh, core structure and uh, two coils. So we have one coil, which are electrically not connected to each other. Uh, this is very important. So uh, one coil uh, is connected via some switch to a battery. And another coil is just uh, connected to ampere meter, means it's just shorted on itself. Uh, without any batteries in uh, inside. So when we have open uh, switch, uh, nothing is going on. Uh, there is no current. Uh, when this switch is uh, on, uh, what happens? Definitely uh, some current is flowing through this uh, first uh, coil connected to the battery, which is defined by the electromotive force of the battery and uh, resistance of this coil. And uh, it takes some time to um, 
to reach the current value, uh, like steady state current in this coil. Um, and of course, while this current is increasing through the coil, um, also increases magnetic field generated by this uh, current through this coil. So this magnetic field is kind of um, concentrated in this ion fork uh, and uh, uh, also enhanced because of uh, ferromagnetic effect in uh, iron. We know that um, iron is one of the classical uh, ferromagnetic material. So obviously, uh, then uh, there is some change in magnetic uh, field flux through the second coil. Uh, it was equal to zero initially when the switch was uh, open. And uh, after switch is on, um, it reaches to some steady state uh, value uh, for during very short period of time. Uh, and definitely there was some uh, increase in magnetic field flux from zero to this steady state value. So because of this um, change of magnetic field flux and uh, change of the magnetic field in this ion structure, uh, we can measure some induced uh, like, like current in this second coil. And um, obviously, it is caused by some induced electromotive uh, force because of this uh, Faraday effect. Uh, what is interesting then, if, uh, so we measure this induced um, uh, electric current in decoupled um, coil from the first coil, electrically decoupled coil from the first one. So there is only magnetic coupling between these two coils. Uh, there is no electrical contact. They are um, isolated from each other. So uh, after some short time, uh, when this switch is on uh, and we saw some uh, current uh, flowing through the second coil was measured with the sum parameter. Um, there will be steady state condition when magnetic field will not change because um, in the first coil it will be reached uh, steady state maximum current which is equal to electromotive force uh, of the battery divided by the resistance of the uh, first coil. Um, assuming that internal resistance of the battery is equal to zero. Um, then this magnetic field flux through the second coil will be also steady state stationary. It will reach saturation and will not change anymore. Uh, so then, of course, we will have uh, no change of magnetic field flux, no current generated, like induced in this uh, second coil. Once we open circuit, like this uh, switch off uh, the current in the first coil. Uh, that will result in a uh, reduction of electric current very rapidly from some saturated value divide, uh, uh, to, to zero, and uh, also will cause reduction of magnetic field um, flux through the uh, second coil. That will induce um, electromotive force and electric current in the second coil, which will be, in this case, in opposite direction. So, so it will be shown uh, if it was negative direction for the turning on, then it will be like positive current when we switch off this uh, uh, battery and first uh, coil circuit. So that was the uh, experimental setup. And by changing the rate, how fast we change current in the first coil and measuring the rate, how uh, fast uh, responding electric current and electromotive force, like induced electric current and electromotive force in the second um, coil of this uh, system, um, Faraday could derive the uh, actually Faraday law, which tells us that uh, electromotive induced electromotive force is equal to negative of derivative of the uh, magnetic field flux uh, through some uh, 
loop, closed loop um, over time. So it's actually uh, defined by how fast uh, a magnetic field flux uh, is changing over time uh, in uh, the vicinity, like through this uh, loop where we measure this electro uh, induced electromotive force. So let us um, describe this uh, quantitatively. And for this, we will go to our slide. And <clears throat> later, we'll come back to um, uh, this uh, uh, considering applications of uh, Faraday's law. Stop sharing. So now we switch. To, oops, no. Switch to slides. So as I mentioned um, earlier, it was found that uh, induced electromotive uh, force is equal to negative of this derivative magnetic field flux over time. So this is uh, how we can relate uh, induced electromotive force in this closed loop with the change of magnetic field. Um, and also, um, actually, not only change of magnetic field, but also um, change of uh, orientation of the loop with respect to magnetic field. So we will discuss this in a sec. Um, so if, for instance, we have many uh, loops in this coil, um, then, of course, we may need to write that induced um, electromotive force is equal to negative n number of loops times uh, d uh, F B over D T. And uh, this is uh, change of magnetic field flux through uh, a single loop. And then we need to multiply it by number of uh, loops in this uh, coil. Uh, so that's why I mentioned earlier that it's better to have several loops to just to enhance the signal and make it easier to detect. So now let us assume some uh, train, conducting train. And uh, this is direction of uh, the normal to this train, like surface of this train. And also we have another direction, which is external magnetic field. So there is certain angle theta between the direction of the normal to the surface of this um, frame and the external magnetic field. So now uh, how we define the magnetic uh, the, the electromotive force uh, caused by change of the uh, um, magnetic field flux through this uh, closed loop, which is represented by rectangular uh, frame. So in this case, we have electromagnetic uh, induced electromotive force go to negative, negative value of the derivative over dt, and we take this derivative from uh, the product b times a. So we have absolute value of uh, magnetic field vector times area of this uh, loop uh, times cosinus theta of uh, the angle between uh, magnetic field vector and direction of the normal to the uh, surface of uh, this loop. And from here, we can already see um, several options. How can we 
generate like induced electromotive force uh, by uh, changing uh, magnetic field flux. So first option, uh, obvious, we mentioned about this, when we uh, change magnetic field next to this uh, frame, we uh, change the magnitude of magnetic field and that will cause uh, since it's here in this uh, parenthesis, that will cause change in magnetic flux and induce some electromagnetic, um, electromotive uh, force. Second option, we can change area. So if we uh, shrink or extend uh, this uh, loop um, in terms of uh, area, uh, we uh, also will change the magnetic field flux and that will cause uh, induced electromotive force. And another uh, option, which is change the orientation of uh, our uh, frame with respect to uh, stationary external uh, steady state magnetic field. Uh, so then we change angle theta. So changing uh, magnetic field and um, angle theta is the, so these two options, they are the most uh, technically feasible and uh, usually they are used for uh, applications because changing area is, so it's possible to do for uh, case of experimental uh, evidence. Uh, however, uh, practically, it's kind of challenging to uh, realize. And <clears throat> now let us consider uh, one case when we have uh, changing magnetic field with time. So we have such a dependence of magnetic field uh, over time. So this is So there is a question regarding uh, problems. And we consider the problem that will come at midterm after the explanation of this topic. I mean, we cannot consider problems that will come at midterm, uh, obviously, um, because these problems should not be considered during lectures and during recitations. So maybe later, if you have uh, desire, you can uh, consider as to consider your uh, instructor during recitations when you solve problems to solve some similar problems and understand um, the concepts for their application and uh, um, approaches to solve them. Uh, but the purpose of our lectures to consider the theory uh, and explain the concepts in general. <clears throat> so we will consider definitely some examples, uh, but not those uh, which are going to be for meter. Okay, so here we have magnetic field and here is time. Uh, then we have some exponential uh, depend the decay of a magnetic field from its maximum value B naught uh, to some small values uh, over time. And this dependence can be uh, described by the following equation. Uh, so it will be B is equal to B naught times exponent of minus a times t. So we have some uh, exponentially decaying function uh, <clears throat> over time. And uh, the purpose of our uh, task now 
is to find the electron module uh, force generated, like induced in a, a loop with constant area, which is located in this uh, time dependent magnetic field. So let's just go to another uh, slide. And we remember that according to Faraday's law, uh, we have electromotive force induced is the derivative of the flux over time. And uh, we assume for the simplicity that uh, our frame is located um, in that way that the normal vector to the surface of the loop is uh, parallel to the magnetic field. So there were, therefore we have cosine theta equal to unity and we don't have uh, this cosine in the expression. So we will have minus D of A area times B naught times X component minus A times T divided like over DT. So now we need to take derivative of this function. Um, we can take this uh, constants uh, out from the derivative and this will be uh, minus A times B naught Oops. D. Here is this exponent function minus a t over d t, and this is equal to uh, when we take derivative of exponent, so we have exponent of minus a times t, um, then we take derivative of the argument of the exponent and that will be minus a. So this minus and minus will cancel out and eventually we will get a uh, times area times initial maximum value of magnetic field and uh, exponent minus a times so uh, we see that uh, this is time dependence of the induced electromotive force. Um, it will be uh, maximum, which is some, uh, the amplitude value of this electromotive force, say epsilon naught, is um, the product of the uh, coefficient time, time constant, which is this A. Um, times area times maximum magnetic field. And that will be reached when we have uh, T equal zero. So in the first moment when we had the fastest change of magnetic field, we automatically reach the uh, fastest uh, change in, uh, uh, so the, the highest value of electromotive uh, force. And uh, once, over time, this decay of magnetic uh, field, field um, becomes slower and slower, uh, like derivative of this uh, dependence. Our electromotive force um, is also exponentially uh, decreasing. So we have a clear correlation between these two uh, parameters. Okay, so we considered these uh, cases. Let us come back to the um, slides where I share my screen. And we will consider some applications of uh, Faraday's law. So here, let us consider first application, which is nowadays uh, quite often um, can be uh, seen in uh, our electric uh, power grids at home, at, at work, in offices. Um, so it's so-called uh, 
system for safety uh, uh, in our uh, electric uh, grid system. Uh, so we have some alternating current, which is uh, flowing in the power grid uh, and in wires, which are located in, in walls and which forms a power grid uh, in our uh, houses and offices. And what is important that if we have some wire, which is where its current is going in the apartment, for instance, uh, there is also the other wire, like which uh, the, the other end of this wire. So we can consider all grid as just one wire, which uh, goes uh, through all uh, rooms and uh, comes back to the uh, setup, which calculates the power we consume. Um, so it's the uh, other, technically it's at the end of the wire, which is uh, used to build our um, uh, home uh, electric network. And obviously if there are no leakage of current to some, some unintentional uh, shortage, like short circuit or um, contact of uh, metal housing of different um, equipment, then uh, the in, like this current, which is flowing through um, conductor one and conductor two, they should be uh, exactly equal to each other. So if they are exactly uh, equal to each other, they are in different directions. So they kind of compensate each other. And that's why there is no uh, magnetic field flux, uh, which is uh, generated uh, through this uh, sensing coil. And there is no any uh, induced electromotive force, which uh, can switch on the uh, circuit uh, breaker. So everything works fine. But then imagine that uh, one uh, of equipment, let's say we have some compressor in, uh, in our fridge, and uh, this the isolation of its coil was damaged, and it, was, it became in the contact with the housing of the uh, compressor and automatically with our fridge. So in that case, our fridge uh, surface, like metal surface, would be under a certain potential uh, with respect to ground. And if, for instance, we want to uh, take some food from this fridge, we touch it. And since it's under some potential, uh, there will be some potential difference between your arm, uh, which is in contact with the housing of the fridge, and um, the floor, and there will be some current flowing through your body uh, because of this situation. So it's obviously very dangerous and can be uh, lethal if the current is uh, high. And that's why uh, such devices are embedded in the uh, electric power network. Because in this case, you need to uh, current in the conductor two will be smaller than current in the conductor one, because it will be uh, current in the conductor one, subtract that current which flows through your body. Uh, and this small change in this, the discrepancy between these two currents will result in some net magnetic uh, field, uh, which uh, uh, will change the magnetic field, create some magnetic field flux through sensing coil. Induced electromotive force will uh, indicate to the circuit breaker that it's time to um, open the circuit. And in this case, um, or a circuit will be open, there will be no potential applied to the uh, supplies. Uh, uh, and uh, this uh, dangerous situation will be stopped automatically uh, within uh, like few microseconds. That's why this current flowing through a human body will not have enough time to um, cause some uh, 
uh, damage, uh, in uh, unreversible damage uh, to health. Uh, so this is very useful and uh, important device, which is uh, fully operates based on uh, Faraday's effect. Also, another uh, interesting application is um, has found in electric guitar. Uh, so in that case, there are some parts of the string of these electric guitars, uh, which are intentionally magnetized, magnetized and they remain like magnetized for long time. So act actually as some small uh, permanent magnets. And this magnetized area is always located next to uh, some uh, permanent uh, magnet, some, some ferromagnetic material uh, around which we have some uh, wrap around uh, which uh, some uh, current in order to create uh, electric coils. And uh, by causing oscillations of this uh, string when we uh, touch it and generate certain sound. The same oscillations of the uh, like mechanical oscillation is transformed in oscillation of electromotive force and um, certainly in this induced current uh, because of changing magnetic field flux through this uh, coil. Uh, since we uh, increase magnetic field when we when this string is coming closer to the coil and uh, decrease when it goes uh, further, um, then this tiny um, induced uh, electromotive force and current they go to electrical amplifier amplified and then can be transformed to some um, high power speakers. So by the way, um, keep in mind that this kind of interesting uh, fact that uh, regardless of achievement of modern uh, microelectronics um, and uh, semiconductor industry, uh, still the best and the most expensive um, sound amplifiers um, are actually based on uh, vacuum tubes. So instead of diodes and transistors, um, <clears throat> and that is uh, the, the main reason for that, because um, nevertheless, it's possible to make uh, current amplifier much cheaper and much smaller with based on transistors. There is some fundamental feature which we cannot overcome. Um, we uh, all transistors and diodes they have some uh, very small but still existing um, reverse current, and that reverse current creates it's a source of some noises, specifically when we amplify signals. Because if we, if we amplify signals with different frequencies, we automatically amplify also electric noise, uh, <clears throat> and uh, there is only one device, this vacuum tube, which um, based on its design uh, really uh, is capable of realizing zero reverse current. And uh, <clears throat> then when we amplify signal with uh, some weak signals with different frequencies, like input signals with amplifiers based on um, vacuum tubes, then um, the quality of the sound is the highest. That's why uh, even nowadays, the most expensive uh, amplifiers are made of uh, these vacuum tubes. And uh, it's not going to change soon because uh, with semiconductor diodes and transistors, it's physically impossible to overcome this um, uh, very tiny, but still noticeable dark uh, reverse current. So, um, however, the most important application of um, Faraday's effect is uh, generation of electric current, which is used in uh, electrical generators. Uh, there are different constructions uh, of these. Uh, for instance, here on these uh, pictures, you can see uh, a starter, it's like this part which is not moving, which consists of uh, many um, coils uh, of, of uh, uh, copper wire 
and uh, uh, rotor. This is moving part of uh, this generator uh, where we have uh, the same number of permanent neodymium magnets. Uh, these are very strong uh, permanent magnets, uh, which can create magnetic field next to them uh, beyond one Tesla, uh, which is really an amazing result. Uh, and uh, uh, by like rotating this uh, rotor with uh, permanent magnets next to these coils, we will uh, change magnetic field flux. So it will go uh, from maximum when this magnet is just across this uh, coil and then uh, to minimum when uh, the gap is across this coil. Um, and uh, because of changing of magnetic field flux, obviously we will generate some electromotive force and um, induced current. Uh, that is the principle of uh, gener electrical generators. Uh, when we um, create magnetic conditions for changing magnetic field flux through um, different coils. And a result, as a result, we get um, this induced uh, electromotive force and uh, electric current. Um, so this particular case, um, coming back to this uh, statement, which we considered for possible options for changing uh, magnetic field flux, uh, here we change uh, magnetic uh, field uh, next to this uh, coils of the starter. Uh, and also there is different design for uh, generators when we uh, rotate the uh, coils. So the, this rotor is consisting of not of magnets. Magnets are um, representing uh, like embedded in the stutter. So it's not moving part. And then we rotate the um, coils um, in order to change the orientation of these coils with respect to permanent magnetic field, um, this angle theta. And uh, that is also one uh, opportunity for generating electricity. OK, let us come back to our slides. And <clears throat> now we will uh, proceed further um, and consider some uh, motional uh, electromotive force. Uh, so let's say we have magnetic field, which is oriented perpendicularly to this plane of the uh, image uh, be in. Then we have some uh, conductor with lens L. And it is moving to the right perpendicularly to the uh, magnetic field with some uh, velocity v. So we know that, so it's a metal uh, wire. We know that in metal, uh, we have mobile uh, electrons, which can move inside this material. And uh, what will happen here? So if we move this uh, conductor uh, perpendicularly to the magnetic field, then there will be some uh, force, magnetic force, exerted on these electrons. So it's magnetic force. Obviously, if there is some force, these electrons will be moved, like concentrated um, next to this uh, uh, bottom part of the conductor. So it will be, here will be created some excessive, uh, not compensated uh, negative space charge. And uh, since according to the electoral neutrality principle, 
uh, there should be uh, this conductor should not be should not possess any net electric charge. Uh, at the opposite side of this uh, conductor um, should be created some uh, space charge of uncompensated positive uh, charges. So such uh, rearrangement of electrons in this uh, conductor because of uh, effect of magnetic force uh, on uh, electrons which uh, are enclosed in this conductor and this conductor is moving with velocity v perpendicular to the magnetic field vector. Uh, there will be some induced internal electric field and if there is some uh, internal electric field between this uh, positive um, and negatively uh, charged edges of the conductor, there will be some electric force acting on these uh, electrons. And this um, electric field will continue to increase to that moment when uh, uh, a magnetic force will not be compensated by uh, electric force. So as a result, we will get some uh, steady state uh, condition, and then we can calculate uh, the relationship between uh, magnetic field velocity and also um, potential difference between uh, the edges of this uh, conductor. So let us do it. So we know that magnetic field is equal to uh, U times a vector product of velocity and magnetic field vector. Um, assuming that velocity is perpendicular to the magnetic field vector, that will be equal to U times V uh, times B. Um, let's put here absolute values. So it will be correct then. Uh, and then we also know that electric field, like magnitude of electric field, is equal to uh, Q times uh, electric field. Uh, vector, uh, like magnitude of electric field vector. So now we can, um, we know that under steady state conditions, these forces are equal to each other. So we can write uh, that uh, Q times E is equal to Q times V times B. So Q we cancel uh, out and uh, we see that electric field, magnitude of electric field, in this case, will be equal to um, V times B. So we also can, um, in order to determine the different potential difference, uh, something what we can uh, measure with a voltmeter, uh, <clears throat> we can uh, consider that delta V is equal to electric field times length of this conductor L. And eventually we get magnetic field times L times V. So this is the equation which describes the um, uh, potential difference between the edges of a, a conductor which is moving perpendicularly to the magnetic uh, field. So I see that we already are running of, out of time. So um, we can continue next time, maybe with uh, considering the uh, electric circuit made of such uh, moving straight conductor and uh, um, calculate some current which will flow in this system. And uh, afterward, we will move uh, to uh, lens. Uh, law, which will um, kind of give us explanation of this uh, 
uh, minus uh, in the Faraday's law. Uh, so it will kind of explain us uh, why we have this or not other direction of induced um, electromotive force and electric current. So that will be on Wednesday. Uh, if you have any questions, you're welcome. No questions. Thank you. Okay. If not, then have a, thank you for attention. Have a good evening and take care. Thank See you. you. Bye -bye.